All of the pieces of the arcade cabinet model are in place. But before we move on to add color and texture, we'll want to make sure our geometry is optimized for use in a game engine. I've already mentioned that it's very important to keep poly count to an absolute minimum when modeling game assets. And in some cases, for example, mobile game development, the poly limit can be very strict. We've taken care to reduce the number of subdivisions for the primitives in this model, and we've also been pretty conservative about adding extra geometry to the curved sections of our piece. And smaller details like nuts and bolts, which won't affect the silhouette, have been left out entirely. But one additional step that we can take to reduce the geometry in this model is to delete any faces which would be hidden from view by other parts of the model. For example, the cylindrical base of the joystick is capped on the top and bottom, but both of these caps are obscured by other pieces of geometry. So we can switch to face component mode, select these unwanted triangles, and hit backspace to delete them. If you ever have a hard time accessing or viewing object components because something else is in the way, you can temporarily hide all but the selected object by choosing Show, Isolate Select, View Selected from the camera menu. This tool may also be used with individual components. I'll isolate the joystick cylinder to delete the faces on the top cap, then restore the visibility of all the objects by returning to the Show menu and unchecking View Selected from the Isolate Select menu item. This is another command that is assigned to a useful hotkey. Control-1 toggles the Isolate Select display behavior on and off. We have some additional unwanted faces on the outside of the arcade body. These faces are now hidden by the side panels, so we can delete them by selecting the arcade body and hitting Control-1 to hide everything else, then right-clicking to switch to face component mode, selecting the extra geometry, and hitting Backspace or Delete on the keyboard. You can see that I've accidentally deleted one of the faces beneath the control shelf. If you catch the mistake right away, obviously you can just hit Control z to undo. But depending on when you discover the error, it might be too late to use the undo command. So if you ever need to add an individual face to a model, you'll want to go to the Mesh Tools menu and choose the Append to Polygon tool. This tool lets you add a polygon face to disconnected edges, also known as border edges. Just left-click once on a border edge to initiate the command, and click again on another border edge to complete the polygon. I'll hit Control-1 to restore visibility of all the geometry and look for other opportunities to reduce geometry. The backsides of a lot of my buttons and panels seem to be intersecting with the body of the arcade cabinet, so rather than selecting each of them and isolating their visibility, I'll just hide the arcade body and sides by selecting them and choosing Display, Hide, Hide Selection, or choosing Control-H on the keyboard. Now, I can easily tumble the camera around to view the backsides of buttons and panels and eliminate unwanted faces. I'll switch between wireframe and shaded mode, hitting 3 and 4 on the keyboard as needed, to make sure that I'm selecting the correct faces, and delete the faces on the backsides of the panels first. Then, I'll hide the panels so that I can access the extra geometry on the cylindrical locks. For some game assets, this might be overkill, and a few unnecessary polygons would be totally acceptable, but it's good to get into the habit of making your game models as light as possible. We can restore visibility of the arcade body by returning to the main menu and choosing Display, Show, All. We've eliminated almost all the hidden faces from our model. In the next video, we'll take a look at some useful component selection tools that will make it easier to grab and delete the last few unwanted faces.